Okay, today I will show you how to play Western chess, which has been around for almost 2,000 years. So you lay out the board, which is consisting of an 8x8 grid, consisting 64 squares. And you must have a white colored or lighter colored squared facing on the top left and the bottom right corners. The first row in front are filled with eight pawns. You must have eight of them. And the second row in the back are other pieces arranged going from left to right. Rook, Knight, Bishop, Queen, King, Bishop, Knight, and Rook. So you set it up correctly when the other player does the same thing. So here's the group of red pieces. However, when you place the king and the queen, you must have the kings, you must have both of the kings along the same vertical line. So for instance, if I'm going to put my queen here, I must have my queen be on the same vertical line as my opponent's as your queen. And same thing with the king. So that's how you start the game. So for instance, you you usually know that white pieces goes first, right? Well, in this case this is blue versus red, so let's say blue goes first. And each turns alternate with blue, then red, and it goes on until first player checkmates their opponent's kings. So, let's get into each of the pieces on how they move. Pawns move one space forward at a time towards the opponent's side of the board, but unless it is the first move of the game for each of the pawns, in which case they can move two spaces forward or one space. And they have a special attacking move. When any time they have an enemy piece directly, diagonally directly in front of them, pawns can only capture enemy pieces by one space diagonally forward, like that. And here's a special thing, when I just make, get all the pieces out of the way, if a pawn reaches towards the end of the board, that pawn gets a promotion and gets to turn into whatever piece. And I'll explain later on. The next piece is the knight. The knight moves once two spaces on a straight direction except for diagonal and then one more space at a 90 degree, 90 degree angle. Moves in the shape of an L. So I'll put some Lego pieces on just to show you where the knight can move into. So you see here, these are the spots that the knight can move into. So for example, it goes one, two spaces on a straight line, and then one more space at a 90 degree angle, left or right, like that. But here's a special thing. Knight, the knight is the only type of piece that can move over any pieces in its path. So for instance, we have a group of pawns in the way, we can jump over and land on the square 
the night finishes. Next, we got a bishop. The bishop can move any number of spaces in any diagonal direction. So again, I'll lay out the Lego pieces just to just to help you guide along. So it's like that. The bishop captures the first enemy piece they move into. So for instance, when, when there is your own piece in the way, for example, your pawn, you cannot go further than the pawn or jump over it, obviously. Or unless if that's your enemy pawn, you can go ahead and capture the enemy pawn and at the same time, that is the square you have to stop on. You can't keep going. So that's the rule of capturing. The rook can move any number of spaces forwards, backwards, left or right along the straight lines. Like this. The rooks cannot move diagonally and and they also capture the first enemy piece they move into. The queen can move any number of spaces in any eight straight directions. So it's like it sounds like the move of the bishop and the rook at the same time. Wow. So again, I'll lay out some pieces just to give an idea. Just to help you know how the queen moves. So it's like this. Very strong movement, right? And same thing as bishops and rooks. Cannot jump pieces of jump over pieces, but instead captures the first enemy, enemy piece she moves into. Last of all, the king can move one space at a time in any direction. The king must never move himself into check, otherwise the game is lost. So like that. Okay, let's get into the situations of check and checkmate. So whenever move is like when someone is threatening the king, that is meaning one space that the king is one space away from being captured, let's say the blue queen moves over here and checking the red king. The attacking player must say check. And there's three and if it's check, there's three ways to get out of check. You either move your king out of the attacking range, like that. Or Block the, block the path of the attacking piece with another piece, like that, so then the king is now safe. Or, actually, third way is capture an attacking piece that's threatening your king. So that's three ways of getting out of check. However, if, however, whenever a move that creates a situation where it is impossible to save your king, for instance, I move my rook over and now this king is in danger, then the attacking player declares checkmate. The game is over and he wins. 
Now, let me show you what happens, what stalemate is. Okay, so whenever a situation where I'm about to checkmate my checkmate the king, and he runs away, but if it's like that move, that's a classic stalemate. Stalemate is the meaning where our defending piece, where the player's king is not in danger, but the problem is has no legal moves to make. Then the stalemate is is the meaning a draw or tie, and none of the players will get the victory. So that's how you play chess. Now I'm going to get to special rules of chess. Now let's get into promotion. So let's say a, a blue pawn successfully reaches the last row of the board where it has no future move. The pawn has, a player has options to promote into whatever piece. So obviously you cannot stay as a pawn. Instead you promote into either a knight, a bishop, a rook, or even a queen, which most of the players do do select. But depending but depending on which whichever pieces have been captured. But the only piece that you cannot promote into is the king. You can't have the sick second king. That would be crazy. And you can't even stay as a pawn either because since I mentioned earlier that this pawn will never have a future move. The second rule, speci spe second special rule is called castling. So what castling is, you have the king and the rook here. You move your king by two spaces towards the rook. When you do that, you're going to make your rook jump over the king and land onto a square directly next to the king on the opposite side. This is called castling. So, there are several rules. In order to castle, it must be the king's very first move, and it must be either rook's first move of the game as well. Next, there cannot be any pieces in between. You must have both of these squares clear. Otherwise, you won't do castling. And king is unable to castle while moving through check or go into check. And, and you cannot castle, you cannot do castling when your king is in check on that spot. So those are the requirements for castling. And finally, the third special rule is called en passant. So this is a fancy French word. It is, it is the translation to in passing in English. So let's say, for instance, the blue pawn has moved into the fifth row, like this. And next, the red pawn moves two spaces forward from its home square. And now you see the situation that both of these pawns are standing next to each other. Special thing is, that blue pawn has an option of capturing the first pawn by moving one space diagonally forward and land onto a square directly behind the red pawn. But that pawn must do so on the very next move, otherwise the opportunity is lost. So that's how you do en passant. It's pretty, you, it's pretty strange, but this is, this happens as well. But you must follow these rules. You got to remember these rules carefully while playing. So I repeat about en passant. Firstly, the pawn, def defending pawn, must move two spaces forward from its home square but both of the pawns must stand directly next to each other along the same row. 
And also, thirdly, the attacking pawn must move one space diagonally forward and land on the square directly behind the defending pawn, directly on the very next move. So that's the three steps for en passant. Okay, so that's about it for, for chess. I hope you enjoy listening to the rules. Stay tuned for other kinds of chess videos that I'm going to make in the future. Thank you for watching.